Well, don't worry, we are going to play some golf today, but we thought we'd start off here. We've just stopped off for a coffee in what is possibly one of the best views I've ever seen in Scotland. Just look at that. Wow. We're on the Murray Firth, and we'll be at Hopeman Golf Club very soon. But for now, just taking that view. Not to be confused with Barbados. Wow. So welcome back to episode two, and yet yeah, coffee is drank, and we just made our way 15 minutes from where we're staying in Lossiemouth up to Hopeman Golf Club. You know what they say when in Rome? There was a Romans do, so a bit of uh, common skin. Pre-match. Wow, that's gorgeous, isn't it? Ah, right, so downwind on the first, we made par, right back into the teeth of it on the way back, we just made bogey, it is blowing a hoolie, 35, 40 mile an hour winds, we're at Hopeman Golf Club, like I said earlier, on arrival, a bit of that Cullen Skink was absolutely gorgeous, for those of you who have not heard of it, it's a soup, it's like kind of uh, haddock in a bit of cream and potato, and it's absolutely gorgeous, and a perfect start to our day, so it's a par bogey start, let's see where team number three is. Right, we've already made our way to the uh, seventh tee. Uh, you know what happened on one and two. Three, four, five and six, I kind of played okay. Uh, nothing major to report back as yet, but a nice little par three, I say little 178 yards. I know the big question you all want answering is why the white glove and why is it not khaki green? I think I've had a, a wardrobe malfunction. I'm not sure what happened. I think I'm going to get camouflage in the trees shortly. Anyway, let's get back to the golf. The wind is playing havoc, it's, uh, it, well, we're downwind playing 180. I'm going to try a 7 iron. That's right on line for the flag, but I don't know what's between us and the flag. That looks really good, it's done exactly what you'd expect it to do. On this terrain, it's landed short, it's bounced on and bounced on, and uh, who knows, we'll see when we get over those mini hillocks. 
Our eight are really nice golf hole. Uh, you play straight down, you see the tee shot now. A little bit down the left, didn't cut like I'd like it to. A bit of heather all down left and right, and again, when that's in sort of full colour, it looked really nice, and my shot had been a lot more difficult than what I've got now. But again, it's a green, it's a really tight, narrow green from what I can see. Bunker left and right, stone wall on the left, a type of hole that kind of oozes a bit of character and, and a golf hole that I like. I will say that I've left my rangefinder on a buggy in Elgin Golf Club yesterday, and I'm trying to get that back, and right now I've no idea what yardage I'm playing. You know, so I get the excuse in before I hit the shot. Well, if the yardage is right, it needs a bounce, I think. Bounce. Oh, no. Go on. Oh, the wrong way. Come back. Come back. Do you know what? It was probably the right yardage. Wind took it a little bit, drifted off to the right. You can see the flag's almost bent sideways. It's come off the camber into the green as opposed to going into the bunker, so there you go, we'll take that, eh? Ah, not quite. Seriously, to get that ball, you've got to duck under the flag. The wind has gone absolutely crazy. But I've got to say, it's a ninth green. It's the first time that everything opens up and you get that full view of the Murray Firth. I think over the other side is that possibly donut kind of area. But wow, what a view for the back of nine. It's choppy out there, though. Flight 11th hole, I don't know the yardage, what I do know is we're downwind and I think, uh, and I mean downwind because you're playing two ways. One way against the wind you're almost, well, forfeiting bogey and down here you've got a chance of driving some greens because the ball is going for miles with the wind and then bounding for a long way. I love the look of this hole. It's tight as heck. There's hillocks all down the fairway. And it's hard to stand up. Oh God, turn a bit more. You've got the camera behind, you should be able to pick that one up. It's heading for the bunker on the left, which I don't know is a green side bunker. I can still see it bounding. I think that's where it's probably finished up is, uh, well, what looks like to be for me a green side bunker. And my guess is that'll be over 300 yards, but I, it is a guess, but the ball is going for miles one way and not so far the other. I think I'll have to hold on to my hat because the wind has just gone crazy. A little bit ambitious with that drive saying it was Greenside Bunker, it's actually 350 yards this par four, so well we've probably got it a good 300 down the wind. With all these hillocks around you need a bit of a you need a lucky bounce to have got to where I did. Right. I'm not quite sure what the right shot is in this wind. I've got a lofted club and probably a bit of a mistake. Needs a firm bounce. And again, and again, and again. Ah, oh, do you know what? We'll take that for birdie, I think. Why the signature hole is the pre-sack, I think that's the way you say it anyway, and uh, it's somewhere over here. You'll see it as I do. And then we'll worry about how we're gonna play it. What an absolute, oh wow, what a view, what a golf hole. So here's our tee box, but somehow we've got to get down there and uh, that's so nice isn't it, look at the water, it's so clear as well. I don't know what it plays, about 150, they said it can play from pitching wedge to driver depending on which way the wind's blowing, well we're sort of, we're definitely playing into it anyway, I don't know whether it's going to be drive, we'll work that one out now. Right, we've decided five iron, uh, I don't know. I can't persuade myself that uh, that is anything more than a five iron, but maybe I'll be proven otherwise. I know the wind is again massively off the left hand side.
That was nearly the hack on. Good catch, that. I played that as well as I could have. Sit. Oh, jeez. I said the back, it went long right over the flag. I played it a really controlled shot and it was way too long. I can see it, it hasn't gone in the gorse, but it was over the flag. It's as I make my way down to the green on this uh, 12th hole, it's time for a bit more whiskey tasting and this time it's from a favourite distiller of mine and perhaps my favourite whiskey. It's back at Glen Farkless. Taste a bit of whiskey and then come back and see if I can make up and down on the back of 12. For the past 150 years, the Grant family have made whiskey and it's one of the few remaining family owned and managed distilleries in Scotland. Glen Farkless translates to mean Valley of the Green Grass and it has to be said the backdrop of the distillery is absolutely stunning. The guided tour is as much about the process as it is about the origins of the whiskey and the proud heritage of the Grant family. I was always a huge fan of Glen Farkless whiskey, but I now have an even greater appreciation and I hope this continues to be a truly Scottish whiskey. Right, that's me all spent up. We've got our whiskey ready for tasting after the round, but for now, it's back to Hopeman Golf Club. And then join me at the end, and I'll tell you what I think of these three malt whiskies from Glen Farkless. I've got to say, what an absolute gorgeous golf hole. What you can't see from back there is that uh, huge slope uh, from the back end where I was playing from right to left and a big swing on that foot. Right, we're going to finish episode two right here on this stone wall, which is a feature throughout the course, to be honest with you. It adds to the character, particularly on the back nine. We've got a little bit of seclusion from the wind, of which we've had none. It has been blowing an absolute hooli, which, to be honest with you, I like. It adds to the challenge, and certainly those uh, from nine onwards, when you reach that green, the views open up, and they're with you right throughout for the rest of the round, and it's truly breathtaking. Some real kind of character around the golf course, again, which I thought was a real great feature loved every bit of it loved Cullen skink in the clubhouse that's uh, uh, certainly be something that i try again so i hope you enjoyed episode two we had a brief look at the visit to glen farkless now we're going to finish up with a bit of whiskey tasting and i'll give me give you my opinion on a few of these bottles from glen farkless and i'll see you again in episode three Right, okay, so we've got to say uh, Hopman was good, Ex extremely windy. We've got a little bit more of a sheltered place for my whiskey tasting. And uh, if you go back and have a look at that, uh, if you're in that area, the Glen Farkless tour, as I've already said, was really interesting, very much more personable and about that family business, which I find really interesting. Uh, but the other thing is Glen Farkless, I only discovered, I think it was last year when we did a tour of East Lothian and Glen Farkless was introduced to me by Malcolm Duck at Ducks Inn. I tried this 15 year old, bought a bottle uh, some months later and honestly it's so nice but we'll start with it and have a quick uh, and we'll try all three I've got notice I've got the 21 and 25 and I can't wait to have a try of these to be honest with you oh do you know that what, what the thing is about um, we've been on two different tours and they all say the same thing the people who take you around is that everything there's no right or wrong it's about what you particularly like and I don't like something really, really harsh, um, quite soft, a little bit of sweetness to it. And that's exactly what that 15 year old Glen Farkas is. I think it's easy drinking. It's um, something like you say, you can take a fairly big sip of that. Nothing too burning down the inside of your throat that you would uh, sometimes associate with whiskey. Really, really nice. I'm gonna have a little sip of water before I change onto this uh, 21 year old. 
and although we took the tops off as in the uh, plastic seal you can see I've uh, not tried this at all so it'll only be as we're doing a little taste it'll only be a small little nip of it for now and then I'll try it a bit later but I'm really interested to see how much better or perhaps worse whether I like these uh, eight, uh, older bottles of Glenfarpus Oh my God, it's so nice, you know. They're just, again, just a little, not massively different, but that bit smoother again. Um, almost, you know, I mean, again, I've said on the previous videos that we've done, I'm no expert on this, but almost honey-like the way that goes down. Oh, that is good. That is really nice. The only trouble is with liking these, um, these older bottles is they become obviously far more expensive to buy so hence we've got these kind of I don't know what size a bottle that is but uh, they're more than expensive enough for our whiskey tasting but well worth it right last one and then um, we've got the end of this video and then we're back on the golf course again tomorrow and episode three will come from uh, Murray Golf Club I think I hope I've got that right a lot darker in colour this, uh, am I right saying that? It seemed darker anyway. You tell me you can see better from that side. So uh, quite an expensive malt whiskey. And uh, I'm hoping, looks a little bit thicker around the, um, or what's being left on the glass. Again, I don't know the technical terms of that. Oh God, it smells delightful. Here we go anyway, slange. So what's interesting about the older bottle is that it's again more more smooth again they each get gradually just that little bit smoother but if anything it just lacks that little bit of a kick i think maybe it's just it's almost um yeah i wouldn't say watered down that's not the way to describe it but it's got less of a punch of the others two and i think again with whiskey i don't know whether i'm expecting well i want it sweet and soft i think i maybe just want a little bit so for me maybe those other two I'd certainly not turn my nose up to it. I'd take any of them. I've got to say that uh, in discovering this whiskey last year, it is so, so nice. And if I'm honest with you, from a price point, I think the 15 year old is around a sort of 55 pound bottle of whiskey, which is already, you know, getting uh, plenty expensive enough. And for the differences, I'd be more than happy to stick with that 15 year old, to be honest with you. Anyway, that's my, as I say, non-expert opinion, just my uh, very, very basic, um, thought process on how I would choose but yeah I think I'd stick with that 15 to be honest with you right like I said earlier on thank you for watching um I hope you've enjoyed this series so far we've tried to include something a little bit different along the way with all these series that we've done and uh whiskey golf seem like the perfect match right I'll see you all next week it'll be uh, 6 30 Sunday for episode three